Riverside is a multi-stage drive where it uses four cascaded gain stages with each stage adding additional gain and harmonic complexity. What we've done is chosen to use both analog and digital gain stages to allow Riverside to optimally react to dynamics and uh, feel and response uh, as well as to have the flexibility uh, that uh, would be very difficult to achieve in a uh, purely analog uh, solution. The first gain stage in Riverside is a Class A JFET analog gain stage, which has variable gain up to 20 dB. And that gain is controlled digitally to allow it to integrate seamlessly with the DSP gain stages. Having a JFET input as the first stage really optimizes the dynamic response and feel uh, of the pedal as it uh, interacts with your guitar. For the DSP gain stages, we looked at analog and tube gain stages and their associated circuitry at a variety of different gain settings and studied their interactions and uh, dynamic and harmonic responses. And with that information, we developed our own custom DSP gain stage. I'm using my trusty Agile through uh, Fender Princeton with bass and treble knobs at four and a half. The volume is a little over three. And here's my clean sound. Now we'll engage Riverside. So with minimum drive and uh, levels at 12 o'clock, it's a very flat response. Let's dial in some low uh, medium gain uh, sounds, which is something that Riverside does, uh, does really well. So that's a very uh, neutral tone, just really a slight amount of gain there. And we'll just bring the drive up a, a hair to push that a little further. You can hear with harder strumming that uh, it is getting a nice drive to it, but uh, with single line notes, it's, uh, it's really just fattening it up in a subtle way. That's really nice to really keep the character of your amp and just uh, just give it a little bit of a push there. All right, and we'll uh, just push the drive a little bit further here. We'll still keep it so with uh, lighter pick attacks, we'll uh, we'll keep a clean sound. Now, as you turn the drive up, uh, what we do behind the scenes is something we call variable circuit tuning. Uh, in our listening tests and uh, investigations, tuning a circuit at various levels of drive is something that's really a continuous process. And it's why it's difficult to have a drive circuit that will actually sound good from clean to heavy drive uh, in a uh, continuous kind of way. But with the power and flexibility provided by having some gain stages in the DSP domain, we have the ability to make adjustments to the interstage uh, uh, circuitry and conditioning to allow a, uh, a wide sweet spot of uh, ranges at all gain levels. Turning up the gain further, we'll add some more harmonics and uh, fatten up the signal accordingly. <laughs> we'll switch over to the bridge pickup. Drive that a little harder. So let's turn the drive up to maximum here. So this is on the, uh, what we call the low gain setting, which have a bit of a looser feel to it, a bit of a more vintage uh, kind of a dimed vintage amp sound we can switch to our high gain range, which will tighten things up and kind of brings it into a little bit of a heavier and more uh, perhaps modern uh, style of distortion. So with the drive at minimum in the high gain setting, it's uh, still a clean tone here. Uh, 
as we bring that up. So we're starting to get uh, into some gainier sounds uh, earlier here in the high gain channel. Bring that up some more. Switch over to our bridge pickup. Bring it up further. In addition to uh, being able to switch between uh, low and high gain settings, we also have a push switch that allows you to push the uh, mid frequencies before the uh, distortion effect. So this will fatten up uh, lower gain sounds or uh, you know kick the drive into, into extra, uh, extra gain territory. So let's uh, dial back the drive a bit here and then uh, see the effect of the push switch. I will engage the mid push. So it fattens up the, the sound. It really gives a broad uh, mid-range push to the uh, to the gain there. Let's see what that sounds like in the low gain channel. That's with the push in the normal setting. Now we'll go to the mid setting. Really fattens it up, makes uh, gets very responsive, uh, kind of you know invites you to, to dig in a bit. Let's increase the uh, drive further there. So everything we've heard so far uh, has just kept the tone controls at 12 o'clock. So there's quite a bit of opportunity to sculpt the sound with the bass, middle, and treble knobs, which is a uh, three-band independent EQ that we've really voiced to uh, you know, work well uh, in front of amps in ways that kind of can quickly let you, uh, you know, dial in the sound of your the particular sound you're looking for. Now, the, the mid control is maybe the most powerful of the three. I would say as a general starting point, if the bass and treble are at 12, uh, you're probably in pretty good shape. And the mid control really can change the character of the sound. At maximum, it fills up quite a lot of space in the middle of the frequency there. Now, at minimum, we'll scoop that uh, mid out. control is also um, uh, a bit of uh, uh, several things going on at once. The, uh, the center frequency and the, uh, the width of the mid filter varies as you change the knob in order to really uh, provide the most uh, usable range of, of mid frequency uh, sculpting. And the treble knob as well allows you to really uh, darken up the tone there. <laughs> Right at the extremes here. So now we're back in the high gain channel with the uh, mid push, and uh, we've got a fair amount of gain going on here. And we'll see what the uh, effect of the middle knob can be on the uh, the tone here. <laughs> 
we can benefit from the response and extra gain of the mid push without having that mid EQ quality be so much a part of the sound by just using the middle EQ knob to, uh, to dial that back. So. <laughs> So there we've got the gain and the touch sensitivity and the, uh, the response without having that mid quality, you know, being too dominant in the, uh, the actual overall sound. Now the bass control, we've also uh, dialed in so that uh, in the high gain mode, when you're in mid push, the bass control is a bit of a resonant response. And that helps kind of, uh, you know, kick the, uh, the low end of, of your speaker cabinet in, in a way that, uh, you know, allows a, um, a nice kind of tight uh, response that, um, that's got a bit of a, like a, a you know, kind of give and take feel to it. So let's uh, turn the bass control up as we uh, experiment in some of these higher gain sounds. And now if we want to really kind of find the, uh, some of the extremes of the tone sculpting. We can roll the middle back all the way, bring the treble up and the bass up, and get a very uh, kind of modern uh, type of uh, gain sound here. And we'll bring the uh, level back a bit. Now to uh, bring out to the opposite end of the spectrum, uh, we can get a uh, drastically different sound by bringing the mids up and bringing the treble back. We'll keep the bass around 12 o'clock. This will give us a very fat um, uh, kind of lead sound, uh, sustaining. By bringing the treble back, it'll be very uh, smooth. <laughs> We have a three position presence switch on the uh, back of Riverside above the input and output jacks. And that tailors the high end frequency response of Riverside and really allows it to uh, you know, pair up nicely with, uh, with uh, you know, any particular amp that you, that you might have. We've been listening to it in the presence minus position, so we'll get a baseline for that again and then switch to the uh, middle position, which is an, an enhanced presence, and hear the difference there. <laughs> Now in the middle position here. So you can hear a uh, increased uh, response, you know, a little bit of the, uh, the high end extension, which can be uh, nice uh, if you're looking for that sound. There's also a, a third position, Presence Plus, which uh, is very useful if you're going directly into a power amp. Uh, you can use Riverside uh, with its three band EQ it's essentially your, your driving preamp, and in those uh, uh, instances, the Presence Plus uh, position uh, will really uh, provide the, the detailed high end that, uh, that, you'd, that you'd want going directly into a power amp. I've got a uh, Sur Strat here and a JC40. This provides a very different uh, combination in, in that the tones generally are very clean and bright in this combination, and we'll see how uh, Riverside can uh, work with those sounds and, uh, and expand the, uh, the ranges. Here's the uh, bypass sound. We can bring the drive up a little bit and uh, add a little bit of uh, just a little bit of uh, dynamics and uh, you know color to the amp that you wouldn't uh, normally be able to get on this amplifier. So there, just a little bit of uh, dirt on the signal. We go back to the dry sound. Now, an amp like this that is uh, very bright uh, and known for its uh, you know, extended response in the, both the lows and highs, we can make use of the EQ on Riverside to uh, you know, complement that by experimenting with the mid control, let's say. Bring the level back to compensate.
bypass song. So it changes the character, kind of fattens it up. Let's also um, try that by using the uh, mid push setting, which will push the uh, Riverside uh, into a, a little bit more drive, but doing so in a way that will complement the uh, sounds coming from the amp. Go back to bypass. So now we're getting, you know, moderate uh, levels of drive that are really fattened up. Now we'll increase the drive and uh, bring the mid back up. Let's go to our bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. 